Did you know a single company could decide the next world war? It's called TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. From iPhones to Teslas to America's stealth fighters, the world runs on chips made here. If the TSMC stops production, the global economy and modern warfare grinds to a halt. Let's break down how one island's silicon empire changes everything and how the next generation of drones, engineered in both China and Taiwan, could tip the balance of power. From AI-guided swarms to radar-hunting loitering munitions, this is the new front line of warfare, where innovation, not size, decides who controls the sky. For all of China's power, its military ambitions are boxed in by geography. And at the center of that box lies Taiwan, a narrow strip of land just 245 miles long. But it sits at the heart of the first island chain, a defensive wall stretching from Japan down to the Philippines. Break through it and Beijing's navy can surge into the Pacific, fail and China stays bottled up in its coastal waters. That's why Taiwan isn't just another island. It's the key to the Pacific Gate. If China seizes it, the People's Liberation Army could threaten Japan, Guam and even Haiti. But if Taiwan holds, that gate stays locked and Beijing's dream of a blue water navy remains just that, a dream. For Beijing, however, Taiwan isn't an independent nation. It's unfinished business. The Communist Party's One China policy declares unification inevitable, and President Xi Jinping has made it a personal mission. The People's Liberation Army trains for this war every day. And across the strait, Washington watches. The US doesn't have a defense treaty with Taipei, but it has armed, trained, and promised support for decades. America's credibility in Asia, and perhaps the world, hinges on whether Taiwan survives. A war here wouldn't be China versus Taiwan. It would be a global shockwave, drawing in Japan, Australia, and maybe even NATO allies. But China might not invade it could strangle instead with a blockade. Encircle Taiwan with warships and bombers, cut off fuel, food, even undersea internet cables, force surrender through battle, not through isolation. For Taipei, that could be even harder to resist and harder for allies to counter. Yet both strategies share a fatal weakness, time. Crossing the strait is among the hardest military operations in history. Rough seas, shifting winds, and countless ambush points. Taiwan doesn't need to win outright. It just needs to delay, to make invasion so costly, so bloody, that Beijing rethinks the price. That's the essence of its porcupine strategy. A porcupine can't kill a tiger, but it can make the tiger bleed. For Taiwan, the idea isn't to outgun China, but to make the invasion too painful to attempt. In 2025, the Taiwanese government put money where its fear lies, a staggering $1.4 billion program to build 100,000 drones in just three years. Not imported, not borrowed, made in Taiwan. Taiwan has set an ambitious goal for its domestic industry, producing 15,000 dual-use drones every month by 2028. To meet immediate needs, the Defense Ministry has already placed orders for 700 military-grade UAVs and 3,422 dual-use drones from local manufacturers, according to data from the government-backed Research Institute for Democracy, Society and Emerging Technology. This isn't just an industrial project, it's survival through scale. The idea is simple, 
flood the skies with cheap, autonomous, precision-capable drones that can scout, strike, and swarm, turning Taiwan's porcupine strategy into something deadlier, faster, and self-replicating. Taiwan's unmanned fleet now spans five core categories, each designed with one goal, to make a Chinese invasion impossible to execute cleanly. The Type A and Type B, short-range VTOL micro-drones, are the eyes and ears of Taiwan's battlefield. Tiny, fast and expendable, Type A micro-drones operate within six kilometers, carrying small payloads or cameras for artillery correction. Type B drones go farther, up to 25 kilometers, with heavier payloads and one-hour endurance doubling as mini-attack platforms or kamikaze units. The key manufacturers are Thunder Tiger, Quartronics Intelligent Robotics Corp, and Geosat Aerospace, all part of Taiwan's new defense industrial wave. Then comes the Type C and Type D, modular fixed-wing drones. These are larger, catapult-launched fixed wings to handle coastal and deep reconnaissance. Type C drones can stay airborne for over two hours and travel 90 plus kilometers, ideal for tracking PLA naval formations across the strait. In contrast, Type D versions operate closer to the front, providing rapid ISR in urban combat zones or contested coastlines. The Type E VTOL fixed wing hybrids are newly developed for 2026 to 27. These drones combine rotary lift and fixed-wing endurance, giving them the agility of a helicopter with the reach of a small plane. They can fly 100 kilometers, endure over two and a half hours, and operate in bad weather, perfect for long-range strikes or deep reconnaissance into Chinese-held waters. Then there are the loitering munitions that don't just see, they kill. The Qian Xiang, Taiwan's star anti-radar drone is designed to home in on enemy sensors, air defense radars, and ship-borne emitters from up to 1,000 kilometers away. Launched in swarms from mobile trucks or ships, they're meant to blind Chinese forces before the first manned fighter even takes off. Smaller Type 1 and Type 2 kamikaze drones built by the National Chungshang Institute of Science and Technology, provide close-range anti-armor and personnel strikes, Taiwan's answer to Ukraine's switchblade drones. Taiwan's Teng Yun-2 and Albatross-2 drones are the crown jewels of its indigenous UAV effort. These medium-altitude, long-endurance systems can stay airborne for over 24 hours, conducting deep reconnaissance or precision strikes across the strait. Teng Yun-2 now incorporates AI navigation and automatic takeoff and landing, allowing operations from diversified airfields, a crucial feature if Taiwan's runways are destroyed in war. Another new project, the Qian Feng-4 Mighty Hornet, co-developed with U.S. defense firm Kratos, is a jet-powered, AI-enabled kamikaze drone designed to hunt Chinese ships in swarms or act as decoys for enemy radar. At the center of this ecosystem is NCSIST, Taiwan's government-owned defense R&D giant, the same institution that built the island's indigenous missiles and warships. But Taiwan isn't doing this alone. A new wave of private manufacturers has joined its defense push. Geosat Aerospace builds modular fixed-wing drones for coastal surveillance and is now partnering with U.S. and European firms. Thunder Tiger, once known for hobby drones, now produces military swarm platforms and recently signed a tech-sharing deal with Israel. CIRC, or Core Tonic Intelligent Robotics Corp, develops compact VTOL drones and electronic warfare variants designed to jam enemy systems. Meanwhile, local startups are experimenting with naval sea drones, counter swarm weapons, and mobile drone assembly hubs that can keep production running even under attack.
Together, they've transformed Taiwan into a living testbed for distributed civilian integrated defense. A war economy built not on numbers, but on innovation. Taiwan's strength doesn't come from hardware alone. Its drones now fly with code tested on real battlefields, much of it adapted from Ukrainian combat software, optimized for anti-jamming and swarm routing. Meanwhile, US and Israeli defense firms, including Kratos, Aerovironment, and Anduril, are quietly partnering with Taiwanese companies to co-develop AI systems and counter UAV solutions, often bypassing export restrictions through local assembly. But if Taiwan's drones are a shield, China's are the sword. And it's a sword forged at industrial scale. Sharp, relentless, and growing faster than any military drone program on Earth. Across the mainland, China's state-owned aerospace giants are waging their own kind of arms race. Not against each other, but against time. The Aviation Industry Corporation of China, China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, and China Electronics Technology Group have fused military ambition with civilian operation turning Xi Jinping's military-civil fusion policy into a war machine powered by algorithms, AI, and 3D printers. Their mission? To build a drone ecosystem that can see farther, strike faster, and think for itself. AVIC's GJ-11 Sharp Sword, a sleek, stealthy flying wing, is now seen at Western Chinese air bases, hinting at operational deployments. Built for deep penetration strikes, it's China's answer to America's B-2 and X-47. Invisible to radar, guided by onboard AI, and capable of hitting hardened targets with surgical precision. But that's just one blade in the arsenal. The Jiu Tian drone mothership is a 25-meter wide unmanned carrier aircraft that can release up to 150 smaller drones mid-flight loitering munitions, decoys, and jammers that can flood the sky in synchronized waves. It's a concept straight out of science fiction, and it's already been tested in island blockade drills near Taiwan. Then comes the FH-97 Loyal Wingman, a semi-stealth, AI-enabled combat partner for manned jets like the J-20. Designed to scout ahead, jam enemy sensors, or even take a missile meant for its human pilot, it gives the PLA Air Force a digital strike partner that never tires, never questions, and never misses. Meanwhile, CASC's CH series dominates the export markets from the Predator-like CH-5 to the stealth CH-7 bomber and the CH-901 Kamikaze drone, which can hover, hunt, and dive onto armor faster than America's switchblade. Even DJI's commercial DNA seeps into the battlefield. With Chinese engineers adapting consumer-grade quadcopters into battle scouts and bombers, echoing lessons learned in Ukraine. China's edge doesn't stop at hardware. It's in numbers. AI coordination now lets entire drone swarms communicate and execute missions even when jammed or cut off. Hundreds of autonomous drones can overwhelm Taiwan's defenses, saturating radars, spoofing missiles, and creating chaos across the strait. And while Taiwan is still testing swarm systems, Beijing is already mass-producing them. Factory floors in Chengdu and Jian churn out new airframes every few weeks, thanks to additive manufacturing and state funding that never runs dry. In any future Taiwan conflict, these drones would likely strike first, jamming air defenses, hunting radars, and saturating the sky before manned aircraft ever appear. Hypersonic WZ-8 recon drones would map the island in minutes, Swarming robot wolves would chase soldiers through cities, and unmanned ships would clear the beaches for amphibious landings. China isn't just building drones, it's building a drone doctrine. A way of war where humans command, machines execute, and the enemy never sees what hit them. 
If Taiwan's skies are preparing for defense, China's are preparing for dominance. And in this race, the winner won't be decided by who flies first, but by who thinks faster. That brings us to our last question. If China does attack, can Taiwan hold on? The answer is growing clearer. Taiwan doesn't need to defeat China, it just needs to make the war too costly to win. So, what do you think? Can Taiwan's porcupine quills really deter the dragon? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to catch our next episode, where we'll break down the weapons, strategies and flashpoints shaping tomorrow's wars. Thanks for watching and see you next time.